My name is Mark Johnson. I am president of Texture Technologies Corporation. During this introduction, I'll play a short montage that shows the types of tests that our instruments conduct on cultured meat products. For the last 33 years, our business has been selling the TAXT Plus family of texture analyzers. The instruments are made for us by stable microsystems in the UK. We have also designed an amazing array of probes and fixtures that highlight uh, specific textural attributes. Our business is helping clients figure out exactly which textural attributes they need to measure. Then we help them develop methods to measure and differentiate their product's texture. We have hundreds of customers in traditional meat industries worldwide, beef, pork, poultry, seafood, and so on, whose products typically are whole muscle meats, sausages, patties, ground crumble, processed meats, deli slices, jerky, etc. We have over 30 years of experience identifying how to measure the texture of meats, which probes, fixtures to use, which settings are best, and how to analyze the resulting graphs. When we anticipated the emergence of the alternative protein industry, we then spent a few years creating baseline texture tests that will serve as our benchmarks for meat and biosimilar products. We routinely test alternative protein products that we buy in the market using these methods. Texture Technologies and Stable Microsystems has developed the expertise needed to help our customers optimize their test methods. This has been critically important for new protein companies and new cultured meat companies. Cultured meat companies that have emerged over the last few years have all been trying to create new products that satisfy exacting textual expectations. Their products are optimistically designed to be exactly like steak, pork chops, nuggets, beef jerky, sashimi, tuna, salmon, bacon, etc. These are not easy textual targets to achieve. These companies are not saying, hey, consumers, we have a new product with a desirable texture and taste that you will like and want to buy. Instead, they are saying, hey, consumers, here's another version of an existing product that you already love and that you already have high textural expectations about. By the way, our version also has these other attributes, more humane production, it requires fewer natural resources, has more favorable climate impacts and so on. So buy these products. Since cultural meat companies are promoting equivalency, they need the equipment and skills to be able to prove equivalency. Cultured meat startups are also finally hiring people with material science backgrounds. However, these material scientists are not always experts in measuring and quantifying textural attributes of natural products. Texture Technologies helps our clients ramp up the texture analysis skills that they need in order to deliver great, great products. Thank you. Well, th thank you, Mark, for taking us through that. Um, a couple of questions that come to mind, um, really starting off with what's the, what's really the learning curve for getting familiar with one of these systems? Well, it takes about 45 minutes to unpack it and install the software. Uh, when someone first opens it out of the box, a bunch of moving parts and they have to sort of, you know, just chill out and just realize that, uh, you know, we just put the instrument on, on the desk, uh, plug all the cables in, uh, just attach just by screwing down a, a probe or two. So setting up the instrument's pretty easy. Um, the software installs pretty well, but it takes about 45 minutes to an hour for someone to learn the nuances of the software. You know, how do you program a machine and then how do you read the graphs that come out of it? So someone can be in two hours, someone can be out of the box and operational. Um, but they won't be experts yet because there's a lot to learn about texture measurement. Um, you know, how, how temperature sensitive is your sample? Um, do you have a consistent geometry? Does geometry even play a role in, in the sample? Um, a larger question is, what do you want to know about the product? And therefore, do you want to cut it or compress it or pull it apart in order to tell you what you want to know? So it takes a few hours or days, and we work with you the whole step of the way, or even weeks, um, for someone to learn and optimize what it is that they want to know and come up with some really great test methods uh, that they just program the instrument and it'll always do that method the same way. We call them projects. So once you develop a method, we have a project set to do, you know, cut a chicken nugget 
or a chicken list nugget. Um, and off you go. Two months from now, you come back in, you restart the chicken list nugget project. It has all the test settings and everything all ready for you. So uh, a few hours to get operational, a few days or weeks to get expert. That's great. And I found it interesting that you mentioned that your team started looking specifically into alternative proteins and, and cultured meats. I see there's a couple different fixtures on, on the table there. Were there any new kind of kind of custom to cultured meat or alternative protein like fixtures that you guys needed to come up with? Um, yeah, a whole bunch of them, but, but specifically um, the early versions of cultured meat, people didn't have a large amount of sample. You know, they were, they, you know, just how do you measure something that might be the size of the you know, sample size, the size of a stick of gum. And yet, you know, and yet you're trying to imitate steak, <laughs> you know, that's really thick and really tall. And, and so how do you scale those two? So we took, and there were all sorts of scaffolding issues and binding issues that people were trying to get the texture, not just the bite behavior, but also the tug behavior. So we actually had a tug fixture. Um, I showed it a couple of times. You saw it, some deli interlocking tug. It's hard to see from here, but you, you saw some deli meat being pulled apart in the, in the montage, for example. Um, well, that's too large, too much sample. So we scaled some things down to very small size, about the size of a quarter. Um, so it has uh, six or seven pins on the top side of a quarter, six or seven pins on the bottom side of a quarter. So you can get a good lock and pull stuff away. Um, but it was really with dealing with what do you want to know? In this case, the tug characteristics, how well these have bound together, um, scaffolding or not. And then how do you how do you pull apart something that's goopy? So you need to hold it and you need to pin it. And and so we we've invented a bunch of stuff like that. Um, there have been other customers that have had, you saw in the video, there was a a white uh, ring where we pulled apart and it just sort of feathered out on the edge. Well, the only thing that is measuring is the binding of pulling apart the white, in that case, paste. So it's purely cohesion, not adhesion. And there've been a bunch of people in the cultured meat industry where they wanna know how self-adhesive or how cohesive is this material. And that's without a scaffolding, but that's when it's early in its, uh, in its configuration. Once again, sample constraint. So we have some fixtures to do that. I saw that and, and that looked like some sort of yogurt or something, or is it something else? In the picture, that was actually a toothpaste. Oh, um, interesting, okay. The, the application study that we have has different types of toothpaste, um, as well as um, peanut butter and Nutella and things that the spreadability is important, but sometimes how the stuff sticks to itself is more important than how it sticks to something else. Um, and that's really hard to isolate. And this uh, pure cohesion fixture isolates just the cohesion and doesn't measure anything else. You mentioned the application study and for somebody new that is um, kind of like a first timer with the system, what kind of benchmarks can they reference and kind of what kind of resources are available to them if they're just getting started with the platform? Sure, so in the software itself is a whole host of libraries, probably two or 300 libraries that um, are projects and you can look and say, how do I test a pate? How do I test a meat? How do I test a, you know, a baked good? You know, it, it, it's not necessarily geared towards cultured meat, but there'll be some of the attributes you want will come out of there. Um, and that's built in. Um, and then we also texture technologies and that's made by stable microsystems. Texture technologies, all the work that we do, we write our own application studies. And I'm just gonna jump to some now. I'll just screen share for a moment, so bear with me. See if I can do this correctly. So now we're, we're, we're screen sharing and we can see um, a whole host of different application studies. And we give these to our customers. Um, so in this case, uh, we're looking at different types of deli meats. In this case, we're looking at chickenless nuggets. Uh, here, we're looking at uh, doing a, a Warner Braxler test on standard meats. Um, this is uh, uh, extruding, forward extruding across some wire of, um, uh, uh, some turkey-like materials. Uh, these are pulling apart deli meats on an interlocking tug basis, really a tug of war on deli meat. It's kind of fun to, to do in the lab. Uh, this is some more, some parallel 
uh, you know, testing ground, uh, ground materials with uh, different types of fixtures that we have here. Let me, I'll, I'll stop, stop the share, but what, you know, so using these types of fixtures. But what happens is each of our application studies has the premise, you know, what are we trying to measure about this geometry or this sample? Do we care about how sticky it is? Do we care about how it bends? Do we care about how crisp it might be? Do we care about the outside texture versus mushy centers? So there's something about the application study that we that is proposed. We then discuss the probe uh, and show how the product is interacted with the probe, show how the sample is mounted, show what the settings are on the instrument. So if you want to replicate it, you could just type in those settings and just go straight to the straight to the instrument. We give examples of the types of graphs you get and then how to analyze those graphs. Because just, just because you get a curve doesn't mean you're like, oh, I just want that peak force. Sometimes you want the area of work. Sometimes you might want to know if something's very rubbery and that might be by design. Are you trying to make something more like cooked pork? Um, so you might want it rubbery. So you want, if you compress something, you want the area after the curve to be quite large compared to the area before the curve. So it returns all that energy. So there are different, there are different things you want in analyzing graphs. All of those are in our application studies that we share with you know anybody who buys the instrument. So that's not a problem. And just kind of a couple more things that come to mind. Um, if there was a team that wanted to create their own custom fixture, is that something they would be able to do, or would they need to work with your team to do that? Uh, they do that all the time. Uh, we um, uh, no problem. Uh, so what happens is uh, someone usually we'll give them a little bit of guidance. You know, you wanna have a, a metric three thread going up into the base and a metric six thread going up into the load cell. You know, the, you wanna have something centered. You wanna not have too much mass. If the material they're doing is something like a gel, you wanna have them have a very light probe so that it doesn't have a lot of mass and acceleration when this thing's sort of bouncing all over the place. So we'll give them some guidance, um, but they design their own probes and, and make it. Um, we even recently had a bunch of people make uh, 3D printed probes. You know, they try Rev1, Rev2, Rev3, and then when they finally get it right, they ask our machine shop to make it or some other machine shop to make it. Um, in the food industry, I think you can get away with the 3D printed probes because the flex of the material that makes it is not that critical. In a lot of other industries, pharmaceutical material science, you wouldn't, uh, the flex of the different materials that you do 3D print it's not stiff enough to um, have a consistent Z direction distance. But yeah, we help customers make their own fixtures all the time. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I think that's, that's all the questions I have now, but um, what is really the best way to get in touch with someone from your team? Um, Texturetechnology.com uh, and that'll get you the contact us page and you'll figure out whether or not you want to reach out to me, Mark Johnson. I'm the president of the company. I own Texture Technologies. So you just, hit me there or mark at texturetechnologies.com or look to see at my regional managers, figure out where you are and just reach out to speak to any of us. Great, thank you so much. Okay, thanks Alex, take care.